Uh, with regards to uh, saturated fat and cardiovascular disease, I, we've discussed this before. Over the last three, four years, there have been uh, several lines of evidence that are suggesting that saturated fat is not as detrimental as we thought. Uh, essentially, saturated fat per se may not be problematic. There's a lot of controversy still, but unlike the old days where it was considered that it's negative, now there is data that perhaps per se saturated fat is not a problem. However, when we tell people to decrease saturated fat, um, they have to pay attention to what they are replacing it with. If they replace saturated fat with refined carbohydrates, it's actually detrimental. Uh, if they're going to replace it with carbohydrates with a low glycemic index, that is going to be beneficial. And if they replace it with polyunsaturated fat, that is going to be beneficial. So when you replace saturated fat, you have to pay a lot of attention to what is the replacement nutrient. And as far as saturated fat per se is concerned, maybe you know, we need to shift our focus on something else. We spent too much time on worrying about saturated fat. And some of the newer data suggests that may not be wise. So we need to look elsewhere, but please pay attention to what nutrient replaces saturated fat, because in some instances, you may be worse off. Well, the thing is, we've had a lot of data on trans fat, and this is specifically industrially generated trans fat produced by partial um, hydrogenation of uh, vegetable oils. For about uh, 20 years now, uh, we've had accumulating data, and it's all been relatively consistent, whether it's based on lipoproteins, it's based on looking at cardiovascular endpoints, that trans fat actually increased the risk for heart disease. Uh, so. The fact that it has been banned simply tells us that the agencies that have reviewed the data, the agencies that are looking at the information also uh, agree. The data is pretty solid, the pr data is pretty strong, and it's pretty consistent. Uh, we may argue should it have been banned, but obviously if low amounts are showing up in the data set as being problematic, then of course it's prudent to completely eliminate. Uh, a lot of guidelines have talked about minimizing trans fat to as low as possible in some cases, you know, to get rid of it completely. So the fact that now the FDA is basically saying that you need to phase this out over the next uh, three years, I think, is the timeline. It's obviously that the data has got to a point where it's sufficient, the evidence is sufficient, it's all pointing in the same direction. So yes, I'm okay with the ban. Now, that's FDA, but there are many other countries where trans fat is still in the food supply. And I think what they should do, now obviously, uh, you know, it's going to be different for different countries, depends on what you're going to replace it with, but the data seems to suggest that out of the various fatty acid classes, trans fats are the worst, so one should try to do something about minimizing trans fat intake. The general consensus over the years has been, for most cases, to restrict saturated fat to less than 10% of your total calories, uh, which usually works out to one-third of your total fat if your diet contains about 30% of total calories. So general recommendations, most guidelines is to be less than 10% of total calories. Now, in some instances, depending on if you have increased risk factors for heart disease, you're at, you know, you're at risk for cardiovascular disease, then maybe 7% of total calories or less, or you know, even lower. So I think the general rule of thumb is less than 10% of calories. And even though we are debating now that saturated fat is not a problem, uh, a lot of data suggest that, but the recommendations are still there for most agencies, so yeah, less than 10% of total calories. Well, I don't think it's dangerous. That's the end of the, f that's the simple answer. There's no such thing as it being dangerous. Uh, and when you talk about danger, it's not that if you eat 
a fat you're going to, you know, fall over the next minute. Even in the case of trans fat, it's been in the food supply for a long time. I guess what you're referring to is the fact that since there's a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fat, is palm oil a problem? And the p answer is palm oil is not a problem. Um, so as far as the diet is concerned, having palm oil in the diet is not an issue.